Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have indefinite integral of 3e to the 2t plus 4e to the t over e to the 2t minus 10e to the t plus 25 dt. Pause the video if you want to try it on your own first. I'm going to jump right in. What screams at me is we need to do some sort of u sub and get all these e to the t's under control. And I'm hoping I have an extra one, right, to make that u sub happen. And sure enough, I can factor out e to the t from both the terms in the numerator. So I'm hopeful that'll work out. So let me rewrite the integral first. Let's take out that extra e to the t up top. And then we have 3 e to the t plus 4. And then while we're at it, let me just rewrite that e to the 2 t as e to the t squared, just to kind of help things out a little bit, minus 10. You could put this e to the t in parentheses if you want plus 25 dt. Perfect. So then now things are all in place. If I go ahead and let u equal e to the t, then du is going to be e to the t dt. And see how we have that extra e to the t dt right there? That's going to be my du. And then now I can rewrite everything else in the integral all in terms of u. No problem. So this is going to be 3u plus 4 over u squared minus 10u plus 25 du. Beautiful. And then from here I'm looking, okay, degree of the denominator is already higher than the degree of the numerator. So I can go ahead, try to find the partial fraction decomposition. At first glance, indeed, I can notice that the denominator factors into u minus 5 quantity squared. So let's make sure we remember how to find the partial fraction decomposition when we have a repeated linear factor in the denominator. Remember first we list out a over that factor to the first power plus b over that factor squared. And then if it was cubed, I would have had plus c over u minus 5 cubed, etc. Okay, lovely. Now multiply everything through by u minus 5 squared. And then now let's see what we have here. So 3u plus 4 equals, it's just going to be a times u minus 5 plus b. Perfect. So 3u plus 4 equals, I'm just going to multiply everything out, a u minus 5a plus b. So setting coefficients of like terms equal to each other, let's start with u to the first. I have 3u to the first on the left. And I only have a u to the first on the right, so a has to be 3. And then u to the 0, aka your constant term, on the left is 4. And I'm going to set that equal to the terms that have no u's in them on the right, namely negative 5a plus b. Well, I already know a is 3, don't I? So 4 equals negative 15 plus b. So B is 19. Boom, that was pretty painless. A lot of the time people avoid doing partial fraction decomposition, and I get it. It can be a little bit of a process, but if you're good at algebra, it shouldn't take that long. And I'm talking you guys through it. You know, when I sit there and do it by myself, I breeze through these. Okay, so we've got integral. 3 over U minus 5. That was A over U minus 5 plus b is 19 over u minus 5 squared. And then close the parentheses, du. Perfect. Okay, we're ready to take our antiderivatives. So antiderivative of 3 over u minus 5 is going to be 3 ln absolute value u minus 5. And then for the next term, if you need a little reminder, this is the same as 19 times u minus 5 to the negative second. So when I take the antiderivative, I'm going to add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, so then I have minus 19 u minus 5 to the negative first, and then now put plus c. Put plus c immediately, all right? Last thing, let's go back, replace u with what it originally was. It was e to the t, so remember we made that substitution. And then I'm also going to rewrite this u minus 5 in the denominator just to make things look pretty. 
So 3ln absolute value, e to the t minus 5, minus 19 over e to the t minus 5, plus c. That's it. Gorgeous. I love it. Oh, no. What is that? Oh, no. So this is nice, straightforward, but, you know, not too boring. And hopefully you guys are enjoying. I just recorded an updated video lecture on integration by parts in case anybody needs a review. But the OG video lecture is still great. So check out both. You can never have too many examples, you know. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know if you were able to solve this on your own. Are we at a point where we time ourselves? Do we want to start doing that? That could be fun. And then the other thing, my classes have exams coming up next week. So as soon as those have been given out to them, then I will film videos solving the exams. Obviously not before. <laughs> and, um, and I'll post those here for you guys as well in case that helps you just kind of get an idea or just have exposure to more practice problems and whatnot. And don't forget, you can follow me also on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. I love you guys.